So I have always sort of thought that web pages were isolated to their own window. Sure, they could make API requests to some server, but that's basically about it. But actually, JavaScript offers a bunch of ways to pass information outside. And today, we're going to look at how you can communicate between different tabs and even across domains. So let's take a look at this example that I have built. I just have two simple windows. One was just a number and the other was two buttons. And when you click these buttons, you can see the value changes on the other one. Now, all of this is done in less than 10 lines of code total and all on your computer without any sort of server. So I'm going to show you how to make this in not one, but three different ways. So let's just get started. Okay, so let's just, just get everything set up and the UI out of the way first. I promise this won't take that long. So um, yeah, first of all, you will need a localhost server for some of these to work. And I won't go into detail of how that's done, but basically you can install some extension or you can just search online for you know how to get that working. But basically you just need to create two HTML files here. So let's call one actually a controller.html like that. And we're just gonna basically get it started with the very basic. So just change the title controller. And all we need here is two buttons. I'm also going to wrap it into a div just to make it better. So div class buttons. And then we can just add two buttons right here. So first one would be add. The second button would be to subtract. And we're done with this HTML file. So let's just create a new one called um, display.html. And we're going to create the same templates basically. And this one will be even simpler. All we need is an h1 tag, which is a header, and we're going to fill it with a number zero, like that. So basically, just navigate to wherever your files are. For me, I put it in the folder local storage because that's our first way of doing it. So the first file will be controller, and the second file will be display. And we're done with all of the code. Right now, this looks pretty ugly, so let's just add some styling. So let's make a style tag, and we're basically going to select the HTML and the body. And just give it, you know, the average default. So width 100%, height 100%, margin 0, padding 0, just so that it won't annoy us later on. And then to place it in the middle, all we have to do is basically select the body. I'm just going to use a flex box for now for convenience. So we're just going to say display flex. And to put it in the middle, we can just say uh, justify content center align items center. And that's basically all we need to do. And you can see it's at the middle right now. And just to make the text a little bit bigger, so we can just select the H1 font size 500%. For the controller, it's a little bit more work on the CSS part, but basically all we need to do is just paste in the HTML in the body scene just as before. So now the buttons are centered. And then we're going to select uh, the button class, so dot buttons. And then here, we're just going to uh, give it a slight border, some padding, more padding at the bottom for visual balance, you'll see why. A background color, some border radius, and finally a box shadow. Then we're going to select the buttons, make the font size bigger, change the height, give it a nice yellow background color, a border, some padding, makes the text border, some border radius, a box shadow, and finally a transition for everything. And then we add a hover state and basically just translate it a bit and just change some colors. And finally, do the same thing for active. And we're done with everything else. And you can see all of this looks pretty nice. And then we copy the whole folder two times. So because we're using the same UI for all of them, and then we can finally get started. Okay, so I just put a script tag right under the styles and we can just get started with our code here. So the first option using local storage, what local storage is, is basically a little bit of space you could store some values that don't get cleared when you reload or close the tab and open it again. And the crucial thing that's important for us is that this storage is shared for the entire domain. So for example, localhost 9000 or like example.com, any page of that domain can access the same values. So here's how you can like store a very simple value. And yeah, you can just say local storage dot set item. And the first one will be like the name or the key. So we can just say count. And the second will be at the actual value, which will be zero. And to get it, all we need to do is local storage dot get item. And then we can just get count and it will return the thing we just set to us. So local storage can only store strings, so let's just start with a count of zero. And then we can just define two functions. So the first function will be add, and this all we need to do is basically let count equals to parse int, which basically converts a string into an integer, and then we can just say local storage dot get item count. So 
this basically gives us a count. And so we can just count plus plus to add one to it. And so we can just set the item back. So local storage dot set item count count. And then we can just duplicate this function and do something that's very similar. So instead of add, we're going to name this subtract. And all we need to change is basically instead of count plus plus, we say count minus minus. And then we're done. Here in the buttons, we can just call this. So uh, on click, add, and here subtract. Great. So in the display HTML file now, all we need to do is basically just create another script tag and say window dot add event listener, just like how you would listen for like a click on a button or anything else. But this time we're going to give it storage. And here we can just pass in um, an error function and that accepts a value called e. So before we do anything, how about we just console.log e to see what it gives you. So great, save. And here we're just going to click add and subtract a couple of times and open the console. And you can see e is an object which contains many things, among which there is a new value and an old value. So we can basically just use new value for this. So we can just say um, if e dot key. So we can check if the actual key is like the storage that's being changed is count. If the key is count, then we just need to change the HTML. So we can just say document dot query selector h1 dot inner HTML equals to e dot new value. And here, that's basically all we need for this. So let's just save. And we can click add a couple of times. And you can see now three, subtract twice, it's one. Subtract a couple more times, it's negative two. Now this basically just listens to all change in the local storage. So local storage, of course, is used for storing stuff. So that is perfect for use, for example, in our counter example, where we have like a number, it's a counter that we need to store. However, with um, at other stuff, like for example, you don't have something to store. You just want to tell other tabs something had happened. What you can use is something called broadcast channel. And basically, everybody can like subscribe to like a channel or you can think of it like a group chat almost. So one person can post a message, which is a string, and the other people can just receive it. And that's really all there is to it. However, I wouldn't actually recommend using this right now because you can see the browser support isn't that much. Uh, Firefox and Chrome has supported it for years. Safari has just begun to support it. So yeah, if you switch to Firefox or Chrome, it should work there. So this API is like remarkably simple to use. All you need to do is basically create a variable called, for example, let BC broadcast channel equals to new broadcast channel. In there, we can just create and give it a name like count. And that's literally it. So now we can just say function add. And here we just say bc.post message. We can just give it like a string like add and then the same thing for subtract bc.post message subtract and then all that we need to do is basically add on clicks to these buttons and that's literally all we need to do so on to the display.html so here we can just say give it a script and we just create a new bc so new broadcast channel with the same name of count and all we need to do is say bc.onMessage. So here we can just set it equal to like any function that would be called. So let's say message. We can just use the error function. And here we're going to console.log this message like that. So let us just open the console right here. So when you go back here and click add and subtract a couple of times, you can see it sends you this message object. And here, all we need to do is basically read the data part. And of course, because there is no kind of, you know, data that is exactly stored, we can just create a count variable here that's like zero. So bc.onMessage, uh, if message.data equals to add count plus plus. And then we can just set the inner HTML to be count. Of course, same thing for if it subtracts, so we can just say else count minus minus. And now when you click add a couple of times, you can see it gives you three. When you subtract, it gives you negative and etc, etc. And that works. So of course, if you were to actually use this, perhaps you would, you know, 
do some more verification of where that is sent from. And you probably wouldn't use HTML because if they send you something that's like that has, contains a script in it, it could lead to like you know JavaScript injection. But just be aware of that. And this is like a remarkably simple API to use for communicating. So for our last example, it is a tiny little bit more complicated because this allows for the potential of basically cross-domain uh, communication. So I guess there's a little bit more like security and stuff that you have to do. So this, instead of just basically posting a message and hoping other people will subscribe to it, what you do is send a message directly to a different tab. So this way you have to kind of gain access or gain like a connection or a reference to that tab. And the way we can do it is basically just start using with a script. And we can just say let target and use any other variable. And here we're going to write a function called uh, open window. And what we do is basically we call the open function. So basically this opens the window. So we can say we open the display.html. So dot slash basically means like this current directory, the display.html. And then the second string is basically the title of the window. So we can just give it display. And the third string is basically like what it's supposed to be. So we can just say like pop up. So it kind of opens it in a new window. And this open gives you like a reference. So we can just set target to this. And we're basically done. So here we can have to add another button basically. So this button would be open. And on click would be open window. Okay, and then we can just add the other on clicks just like along the way. So now let's just write a function, add. And here what you do is basically target.post message. So this thing is also called post message, which kind of like confused me with the other one a little bit. But this, you just call post message directly on the window kind of. And here you can just post your message. And we can do the same thing for subtract. Target dot post message subtract. And that is the controller page done. And now for the display, let's look at what we have to do. So this is in a way kind of similar to um, the previous one about local storage where you also use the event listener. But this time the event is message. And we can just say uh, use a arrow function. And let's just console.log this message again. So basically, the way you want to open up this file is to click the open button, which basically makes you open up a new file. And here, let's just go to the console. And you can see there's a message event. And this, the data is zero because I, I believe it fires a message event the first time when something happens. I'm not completely sure. But now when you click, for example, add, it will send you another message event. And the data would be um, add. And then it gives you a lot of other stuff like origin and everything else. So of course, if you click subtract, the same thing will happen and it will give you the data of subtract. So basically, we can just read uh, if message.data equals to add, do something right, and we can declare a variable again. So count equals to zero, count plus plus. And then you just get the h1 element and set the inner HTML to the count. Now, there's this thing to be very careful of. The post message thing is basically allows you the potential of opening another page. So for example, this, it doesn't have to be a web page on your page. It could be, for example, google.com, example.com, anything like that. And that means you could be able to send a message to any of that. And that also means any other web page could send a message to you. So really what I'm doing here is like basically pretty bad. What you can, what you must do basically is message. You kind of have to check for like the origin, if the origin is the one you want, which is like localhost or something. Like on a real website, you have to do that. But for now, this is the basic, most simplest example that you could give. So let's just close this page again, open it up here like that. And let's just click add a couple of times and you can see everything works correctly. All right. Okay, so now that we have finished the three important ways of doing stuff, let's just summarize a bit. So local storage is a way that's really useful for you know just storing some temporary data that mostly won't get erased for a long time even if you close and reopen the tab. And it is pretty perfect for stuff like this because it's shared across the entire domain. 
and you can see when something changes and you can also change that value. So for a counter, probably local storage would be the best option to go. However, the second option is a broadcast channel. And the advantage is that it's really new and you can see it's incredibly simple to use and it's like pretty safe relatively. So so all of that is pretty good. You know, you can just send an event to tell another web page what happened. However, this is of course like there isn't that much browser support, so you might have to wait a couple more years to use it. The third option is post meshes, which has been around since forever, and you can use that. Um, it allows for cross-origin access and everything else, so you have to be particularly careful. But with that done, we're basically done with the video, so I would say thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed my video, it would be really helpful for you if you were to subscribe and like, so it supports my channel. And I will see you next time.